Hello there and welcome to this week's edition of Times Exclusive with me, Wesley Kasambala, right here on Times TV. Today we are in Zomba and I'm honoured to be chatting to the Vice-Chancellor of the University of Malawi, Professor John Kalenga Saka. <laughs> Weather Shield, another brand from Rainbow Paint. This is Ultimate, an extreme high performance acrylic smooth textured finishing with ultraviolet absorption and maximum flexibility properties for wall finishes. A built in fungicide to resist molds. Simple to use, quick drying, water resistant binding power, low dirt retention, and hides hairline cracks. Suitable for use on all exterior walls, be it plaster, concrete, or brickwork. Available in a wide range of colors in 5 and 20 liter containers. Contact us today in Blantyre 01 841 813 01 841 871 Lilongwe 01 755 901 Email info at rainbowpaints.biz Rainbow Paints, peace of mind, part of the deal. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Pleasure, <laughs> pleasure having you again on <laughs> Times TV. Yeah, thank you very on, much. On, on Times Exclusive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's start with, let's get straight into it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot happening um, with the University of Malawi at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, are we okay? Is the, is the university okay? Um, I think it's a very important question. Thank you very much for that. But uh, we, I, I would like to say that uh, as a public institution, mm. uh, which has a specific mandate uh, to deliver higher education, mm. uh, participate in research, and uh, indeed engage with the community, uh, I would describe that uh, we are on the right track. Right. Uh, we are on the right track in delivering the mandate for which we are. Because uh, as we, uh, we are discussing this uh, afternoon, Mm. Uh, you, uh, the conduct of teaching and learning is underway in all the four constituent colleges of the university. Right. Uh, yeah, yes. What yardstick are you using to determine that, Professor Saka? Because many would argue that actually mm. that is completely dishonest that you are on course. But we are on course. Uh, by, by the way, when a river flows, mm. uh, it goes through uh, a number of uh, you know, opportunities, either this rocket or it is flat, and then indeed it ends joining the Indian Ocean mm -hmm. or the Atlantic Ocean. Right. Uh, and therefore, this is also the case for the investor of Malawi. Okay. Uh, since it's, we started and we look at its history, mm. uh, we will observe that there has been some time mm. uh, when indeed teaching and learning has been interrupted. Yes. Uh, maybe because we have an industrial relations matter between a council uh, and its staff and or with or students. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, when you have those upheavals, there is some disruption. Mm -hmm. When these matters are settled, uh, then uh, the business of the university continues mm -hmm. unabated. Right. So as we, we are discussing... Uh, this is the situation. Okay, two points, um, uh, Professor yes, Saka. Yeah. Um, it's not just about um, the fact that these disruptions have been sort of curtailed um, yeah. for the time being. Yes, yes. The other issue is at the end of the day, the quality of work and the quality of graduates that you're training out. Mm -hmm. That when we, when I ask you whether we are okay, those are the kind of questions that I think viewers at home want answered. Um, are we on course to producing um, the minds that want we want to develop Malawi as a nation? Is the University of Malawi intact? Yes, uh, you uh, uh, yes, uh, that yes, I would say that uh, we are on course because uh, it's uh, what I would like to say that uh, matters of the academy, mm. uh, teaching and learning quality uh, is really the responsibility of Senate. And when you look at the Senate functionality and our commitment to quality, one, at a national level, uh, we have the National Council for Higher Education. So when we implement our academic programs, we are mindful of national requirements. But also the investor of Malawi is an international institution. Uh, and therefore we benchmark ourselves at the regional level, uh, where we are a member of Southern Africa Regional Universities Association, Sarua. 
but equally at an international level or continental, we have the Association of African Universities so that when we develop our programs and we go through them, we must make sure that we meet the requirements for quality graduates. Mm -hmm. And indeed, at, as we speak, our, the graduates of the University of Malawi remain sought after uh, within the country and uh, beyond because we have very good quality assurance systems. External examining exists. Uh, at the end of each year, uh, the colleges will, uh, will bring on board external examiners. I, uh, last week I was in the long way uh, where KCN was processing its end of year results and I had the privilege to meet an external examiner from Botswana. So you can see that we are committed to quality and yet quality of the highest standard. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this is also the case at a, a higher degree level. Mm -hmm. Masters and PhDs, one cannot graduate until uh, the thesis has been externally reviewed, and at a doctor level, we want always to have the external examiner to be in, pre in, in, uh, in uh, present. Mm -hmm. And that when the external examiner says, this is a PhD, we are very happy because this is at an international level. All right. Um, uh, I, you say that, Professor Saka, but I'm going to put this to you again. Yes, sir. What yardstick are you using to determine that? Because contrary to what you've just said, yeah. internationally, you've talked about high standards. Yes, but there have been reports that have, ca have been carried out, have clearly stated that in terms of the graduates yeah. from Malawi, yeah. Malawi ranks incredibly poorly on the league tables internationally, even even within <coughs> our own SADC region. Mm -hmm. So what yardstick are you using that, to determine it, it is, that? It's interesting. Uh, where you have uh, raised the matter of universities ranking yes uh, one who must observe that there are over uh, let's say 20,000 yes uh, universities in the world uh, the times higher education ranking put at at about 6,000 so you can see that we are in the third uh, area but uh, one must also appreciate that uh, the University of Malawi is a much smaller university in terms of student numbers and indeed the staff complement uh, and therefore uh, 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 that has to be taken into account. I must also emphasize yeah, that uh, at, on the African continent, our ranking fluctuates between uh, 100 and 150. But uh -huh. Professor Saka, some would argue that even that in itself is mm -hmm. quite alarming. I mean, a, flu a fluctuation of about one or three, one, two, three spots mm. might be understandable. No, no. But a fluctuation of 50 spots? Uh, no, what, no. Uh, what is, that, uh, is that not a poor indication no, of the no, state would, of our I, education I would, sector? I would, I would say that it isn't. Because uh, it's 50, relative. 50 spots? No, no, no. It's relative. It's relative. Well, yeah? Okay. It's relative. Mm. On the Malawi scenario, we are the first investor of choice. Eh? Uh, yes, because naturally. of our uh, 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 in the region mm -hmm. uh, Southern Africa, yes. we are amongst the top uh, twenty in, in in Southern Africa, so it must be. But uh, when you put every country together, mm -hmm. then uh, indeed we must take into account the various component or parameters for assessing your position. Mm -hmm. uh, indeed, on the uh, the African continent mm -hmm. as well as Africa. So, uh, I, but what I'm asking, if Professor <coughs> Saka, is how are you measuring yourselves? How are you measuring the performance of the University of Malawi? Mm -hmm. Who is measuring that performance and that and assessing whether, in fact, indeed, the quality of graduates and the quality of the university itself is of a higher standard? I'm assuming it's not just the university um, uh, staff like yourselves who are saying that. It no, should be outsiders, shouldn't it? No, no, it should be. You can have an opportunity to interact with industry, the yes. private sector, which uh, as well as uh, government, as uh, the key employers of our graduates. Uh, our assessment over the last four years, uh, I would say that they have been happy. And uh, uh, even if when we are looking at the tracer study, which we have just implemented, we have had an, an opportunity to look at the results. Indeed, if there are areas of consolidation, they would like us to improve on entrepreneurial skills of our graduates. Because for a long time, we would have believed that after your graduation, you will be employed by, let's say, government or a private. But the situation now is changing. And therefore, the, the society requires us to add value uh, to the character or the personality of a graduate. Okay. And therefore, we are diving into that. And that's why when we are developing our programs, we always ensure that uh, the stakeholders are involved and it's necessary. Now, we must say that in terms of our assessment, initially, we must do what we describe as a self-assessment. How are we doing? And at each level of the university, starting at a department, 
uh, faculty, college, and senate. These are the issues which we raise. And uh, I would say that uh, it has been an interesting opportunity to preside over Senate when assessment results are coming. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see the level of thought process and indeed the critical analysis when you say this is a distinction material, it remains a distinction material. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there we are very happy. And that when they go to South Africa, UK for ex uh, uh, foreign education, they do very well. Even those who are on the borderline mm -hmm. of, let's say, ordinary pass, once they go out, they excel as well. All right, Professor Sako, would you accept um, that there are certain areas where you could do better, though? Yes, yes, I would because accept. Because it sounds it. to me like you're saying everything is no, really no, rosy. It, 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 it you're can't painting be. a very, very positive, <laughs> rosy picture, which it, I think you're being disingenuous. No, 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 no. no. I, I, I would like to say we are doing very well. But uh, we, there are areas of further improvement in order that that quality is not compromised. And uh, the strategic uh, direction which the investor council has taken, or we on, uh, in senior management, is that we should improve on the PhD content eh, of staff. Uh, we are still moving, and uh, our intention is to achieve, let's say, in the order of 75. If we can have more staff, at the PhD level, then quality is naturally going to, uh, to improve significantly. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so it's a, it's a process. As we exist now, we are doing very well, uh, but uh, our commitment is to get better. Because it's interesting for us to move in that ranking, uh, we must make sure that uh, the number of staff or the proportion of staff with the PhD and also involved in research, which is publishable, it's very, very critical because that's what uh, is considered equally mm -hmm. uh, in, the, uh, in the criteria for uh, rank. So you think 50,000 kwacha is a big difference? Uh, uh, by the way, we, mm. should make, we should observe here that the, uh, the minimum economic fees which is uh, required for, let's say, for a Bachelor of Arts degree at Chancellor College is 2.3 million mm -hmm. eh? per year. Uh, per year. And that uh, the students are contributing about 11%. Eh? So the rest is contributed or is, uh, is provided by the taxpayer through our government. Eh? So uh, that contribution it is now it, it was reduced to probably 10.8. Mm -hmm. uh, but certainly this is a shared responsibility uh, to one's education because uh, you need to contribute mm -hmm. in that regard. So it's a reasonable uh, decrease. Why not have a more uh, comprehensive, means-tested way of determining who should get funding, who should get help in order to get an education with the University of Malawi? Why not de make it de determine who gets the, the, the money um, based on people's income and their fa the income their family generates? Mm -hmm. That's how it's done in other parts of the world. Wouldn't yeah. that be a fair way of doing no, no, it? No, it, it is. And uh, I, I'm aware that uh, the Rome's board, which is in the long way, has come up with a, uh, a tool to assess the preparedness of an individual uh, based on family attributes. And in that regard, uh, the, uh, since it started, we have actually seen useful, significant improvements. And at the university level in the constituent colleges, uh, they have a team there which helps to provide useful data uh, to the loans board to provide scholarship. Uh, but beyond that, on the basis of what we charge or council charges, there are other uh, organizations which come forward to support. Let's say female students, maybe in uh, science or engineering, the private sector is coming in. And I would like to say that uh, through our engagement with the private sector here, we we'll mentioned Standard Bank. Eh? Uh, you, uh, we, uh, they offered 30 million Malawi kwacha to, uh, to us, and that we must provide that funding to those who are described as needed. Mm -hmm. and that so would report, you say your system is currently fair? No, is it a, is yeah, it a fair system? Because uh, it, it doesn't strike me as fair. It is very fair. Uh, it is very fair. But some and, would uh, argue that people who perhaps could afford yeah. um, to pay for their children are benefiting from these loans no, no, when they shouldn't. Uh, That's why I'm saying, why not make it more means tested? Yes, yes. Uh, that, that is what is the responsibility of the loans board, and they are working very hard in the refining their uh, tool, and I, I, I believe that it's important you engage with them. But uh, in our local setting, we have a very robust system uh, and that uh, since uh, the, the fee issue in terms of their contribution having increased, uh, we are ensuring that it's only those who are needed. Who are needed. So are you confident that these issues of tuition fees are not going to flare up again? 
Because you're saying you're on course at the moment. Yes, yes. Um, uh, what gives you that such confidence to, to, to say I, that? I, I would say that uh, through uh, continued engagement with the student leadership, which is very critical, but they represent a constituency. But uh, it's also important to realize that uh, uh, even though you engage with them, they have uh, a responsibility maybe to protect their constituency. That's why when we come up with this tool, the unit cost for various programs of the University of Malawi, we ensure that they contribute. But the question is, if we said they are contributing about 10%, but others, even those who are well-to-do, would like to contribute 10%. Uh, 10%? Uh, uh, some 0%. Now, we, we have to, uh, now to engage even the student community uh, from, let's say, by the media. What, why is it that you are refusing to contribute uh, as low as 10%. Because the cost of education uh, is not going down, but it's increasing. Because for you to provide a quality education, let's say somebody is going to do engineering or medicine, eh? it is medicine costs nearly 7 million. Eh? And we're only asking you to contribute 10%. But it's much lower than 10%. And, and therefore, those who are not able to let them contribute uh, those who have, let them. So it's a, a, a mean, All right. uh, an average of would, their efforts. Would you say, Professor Saka, the, <coughs> the fees that um, students are having to pay um, corresponds with the quality of education that they're getting? And not just the, the quality of education, but the experience that mm -hmm. they're getting at the University of Malawi. Because that's another important thing, isn't it? Yeah, you pay yeah. a lot of money, yeah. you expect to get quality education. Are they getting that? Can they, you they, say they, that honestly? They, they, are, they are getting, because I, I think you should come one time. Uh, when we are shining out, we have a graduation ceremonies. Yes. Uh, you will see there the gradation. And those who consider as cumulade, yet they pay the same fees. And interesting is sometimes, these are the people who have benefited from the loans or scholarship, but also they come from very resource-poor families. Uh, and therefore, uh, we, would be, we would say we are very happy. And they do very well elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And it's actually the same graduates from the University of Malawi which feeds other public and private universities. All right. And they seem to be doing How that. would you, Professor Saka, how would you rate the quality of education now through the University of Malawi yeah. over the last few decades? Are we actually getting better? <coughs> because I would actually say we actually have deteriorated in a lot of ways. Uh, I, will, I would actually say that there was a period, uh, probably in the uh, 90s, yes. when the quality went down, because then we, there was a decision to increase access. So we recruited more people. At the same time, that was not commissioned with the staffing uh, levels. But now it has plateaued because each time... What is now, Professor Saka? Now, in the last 10 years. And in the last 10 years. So education from the University of Malawi has improved in the last 10 years? Yes, yes, it's improving. Every time it's improving. It's improving. What's, what empirical evidence do you have to, to prove that, Professor Saka? Okay, okay. Uh, but <laughs> I would like to say that... Uh, uh, when we look at the quality of a student, eh, we, we, there are several factors. One is the knowledge content. Yeah, and this is tested. Eh? I must say this is tested at the end or in the middle of the semester. And at the end, and that uh, when we invoke external examining, these individuals are uh, of without the investor of Malawi. They come from Botswana, University of Stellenbosch, some from UK, USA. And that when they evaluate our assessment system, they confirm that we are happy. Because th without the external review of our programs, we may not be a certain in terms of quality. So we have internal systems, checks and balances, internal moderation, and that at the same time with external inputs, who will write to the vice chancellor and therefore to Senate that uh, indeed uh, this is what we think, the quality is good, but there are areas of improvement, maybe you should improve uh, on experience, exper experience uh, measures where more students have more time in industry. I would like to say that when there were few of us in the university, in the 70s, 80s, and 60s, nearly all of us will have an opportunity for industrial attachment. But now you're looking at a student population of 11,000, eh? so some of them will not have an opportunity. But also, there are programs which require industrial attachment or teaching practice, and these we provide 
adequately so that they can appreciate and indeed learn the art of their subject, oh, which right. has not been compromised in any way. Okay, Professor Saka, you're doing a very good job of PR with the <laughs> University of Malawi. But yes. I want to ask you this. Yes, yes. Are you just saying this and being so incredibly, in fact, alarmingly uh, positive about the University of Malawi, yes, purely yes. because your boss, your immediate boss, is the president, no. and that's yes. the vice, the, the, the chancellor himself. Yes, yes, so yes. you wouldn't be able to say anything completely negative, would you? No, 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 no. I wouldn't say so. I w that's a, a very different view, because it's interesting. Uh, would uh, you be honest about it? Because at the end of the day, perhaps you think it would be an, an, a reflection no, no, I, I, of him what I'm saying, as the Chancellor. What I'm saying is an honest fact that the quality improves and it is improving. And we are committed to that. And uh, that's why but they are measured. But it's not facts, Professor Saka, because reports have clearly indicated that no, we've, no, no, we've but, gone but, down in terms of rankings. No, no. University uh, rankings. No, 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 no. So how uh, is it The fact? University of Malawi eh, mm -hmm. cannot be benchmarked or rather be equated or comp compared with the University of Cambridge. No, uh, it can't. But we will compare amongst ourselves, amongst the peers. We are only 53 years. And there is a growth curve. Professor Saka, um, yeah. with all due respect, 50 years is five decades. That's a lot of yes, time yes, to pick yes, up yeah, and yeah. actually develop. Are yeah. you sure you should say that we are only 53 years old, therefore our University of Malawi should not have, at some at this point, been somewhere where we, we can say, hold our heads high and say, you know what, we're mm. on the right trajectory. No, no, 50 uh, years is indeed five decades. Yes. But, and uh, you must say that the growth and these institutions or investors, which are in the top, let's say, five or 20 on Africa, have had a history of over 100 years. Over 100 years. Uh, and that it, it entails huge investment, as we are saying, because it's, we are on the growth path. And since we are on the growth path, we will be proving on, uh, uh, on our ranking. And uh, indeed... Uh, each time we reflect on our ranking and we reflect on the issues which are necessary to improve our ranking. And uh, we must say that if there is an industrial uh, problem, strike, or students and so forth, that affects our ranking. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it must be a collective... But it's not... No, 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 no Professor Saka. It's not just that. It's the quality as well. It's not just the fact that there's disruption of the education. I don't think that's all it is. There's other factors that have been considered. <laughs> there are several Let after me ask you this, Professor yes, Saka. Yes, yes. Are you and your immediate boss, yes. who happens to be the president of yes, this country, yes. Peter Mutarika, yes. doing a good job? Can you honestly say you're doing a good I, job? I, I would say that uh, I can shake hands with you that uh, we, we, this is a wonderful partnership. It provides useful direction through the council of the university and council provides oversight and each time we meet we need to re provide report and it's interesting the diversity of that uh, council uh, adds value to making sure that the quality uh, expected of the university is of the uh, international and uh, regional standards. All right. And therefore, we, we move with their support and guidance. Yeah. All right, Professor Saka, we're going to take a short break, uh, but we'll be right back. If you're just <laughs> you tuning in, much. you're watching uh, Times Exclusive right here on Times TV with me, Wesley Kasambala, brought to you by Rainbow Paints. And today we are chatting in Zomba with the Vice Chancellor of the University of Malawi, I beg your pardon, Professor John Kalenga Saka. But we'll be right back after this. Weather Shield, another brand from Rainbow Paints. This is Ultimate, an extreme high performance acrylic smooth textured finishing with ultraviolet absorption and maximum flexibility properties for wall finishes. A built in fungicide to resist molds. Simple to use, quick drying, water resistant binding power, low dirt retention, and hides hairline cracks. Suitable for use on all exterior walls, be it plaster, concrete, or brickwork. Available in a wide range of colors in 5 and 20 liter containers. Contact us today in Blantai 01841813, 01841871, Lilongwe 01755901. Email info at rainbowpaints.biz. Rainbow Paints, peace of mind, part of the deal.
Welcome back. You're watching Times Exclusive all the way from the former capital of Malawi, Zomba. And today I am talking to the Vice Chancellor of the University of Malawi, Professor John Kalenga Saka. Before we went to break, we were talking about a number of issues, particularly um, the performance or the quality of education um, attained from the University of Malawi. Professor Saka, you were pretty adamant that you're on course. I asked you whether the university is safe. You seem to think or feel that yes things are going well um, of course I don't agree but let's go into specifics now mm. let's start with the reforms there's a couple of reforms that are happening at the moment and some critics are of the view that we're just carrying out reforms at the University of Malawi for the sake of it um, is this not having a negative impact on the university just having reforms willy-nilly no, no thank you very much uh, as an institution uh, which is about the corporate and that it has a specific mandate, uh, growth is necessary. And you cannot achieve useful growth without introducing reforms within the establishment or the institution. Uh, and that uh, uh, over the past five years or so, we have been implementing the University of Malawi Strategic Plan, which had its own targets. Eh? Mm. Uh, and indeed to implement that strategic plan effectively and efficiently so that uh, we, uh, we are compliant and we are accountable for the resource utilization and why we exist for. It, reforms are very, very important. And therefore we as a university, we will say, we prioritize the three reform areas to add value to the implementation of the strategic plan. Okay. So uh, we had three reforms. The first one is that uh, having existed for 50 years, an opportunity arose to review the University of Malawi Act so, such that it would inform the character of the institution. The second one is uh, to ensure that uh, uh, we improve on the resource base because for a long time our uh, funding was largely a subvention abstracted from government. Mm. And therefore we are being challenged that how do we diversify the resource envelope in order to support quality education, which we are supposed to. But at the same time, as a university, we must make sure that the goods and services which we provide to the society, including beyond Malawi, is or are of international quality. So that's where the quality issues you have raised mm. are very, very and important. I, and I still take issue no, with, no, with, no, with no, you because constantly saying it's international standard because I, I would disagree, but go on. Uh -huh. well, so, so we had those are the three reform areas. And we have been implementing them, adding value, reviewing them, so that uh, indeed we move in the right direction. And for the resource mobilization I've, we have shared with you, that uh, we needed to improve on the contribution. Uh, make sure we understand the unit cost for training a medical doctor, and therefore if students come in, what would be the level of their contribution? And it is minimal, I must say that. Mm -hmm. And uh, interestingly, in that regard, we have moved from uh, probably 6. 8% of self-generated income to a level of three-fold increase, okay? Uh, and uh, indeed, it is adding value now. Uh, more resources are available for teaching and learning. Uh, indeed, uh, through their uh, uh, staff uh, uh, libraries are being stocked, whether it's through e-materials um, uh, or hard copies. And indeed, uh, as a result of that funding, we must also say that uh, over the past three years, we have had also useful uh, support from PSIP. So uh, there are, those are the things, and reforms are very important, because even you and me, unless we reflect on our reforming ourselves, our families, we will be where we were 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So it's a very important component uh, of the growth of any institution, particularly for universities, so that we are uh, current, we are responsive, uh, relevant, and that uh, we can compete Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, successfully. I'm glad you've spoken about growth because that's precisely the point. Um, yeah. The reforms are there, but are they actually translating into the growth that you're alluding to? Yes. You talk yes. about resources and trying to add value, etc., yeah. etc. Et yeah. Yet, even basic um, issues like uh, how students are fed, um, yeah. you've, you, the feeding of students has been left to outsiders mm. at the moment. And that's something pretty fundamental. Now, if you can't address um, how the students eat, 
Um, how are you going to address more, more, more complex issues? Why should students have to eat food from, I don't know, just for argument's sake, um, Pachiwaya? When initially the University of Malawi had a fully fledged cafeteria, yeah. I still remember it. Yes, um, it was very popular. Yes, why, why would you fail to address those rudimentary problems and then speak of reform and growth when you can't address that? Yes, uh, I would like to say that uh, that's a useful challenge. I would say a useful challenge because we need to address it. And indeed, there, there are processes underway to address that problem because we realize that uh, with the increase in numbers and uh, less holding capacity in terms of student hostels on the campuses, some of the students must be uh, off campus. And but therefore, those who are on off campus, unless they have adequate money, uh, then they will not access quality food. Uh, and in this regard, what we have done as a university is uh, to engage uh, those who are providing services. We have uh, actually outsourced the cafeteria. Uh, we have outsourced cafeteria because we think this, it is a, a core function, but we monitor the quality of food in uh, the cafeteria. But surely, Professor Saka, uh, that's something very basic, really. Uh, the fact providing food to your students. This is why initially at the beginning I was talking about the quality uh, of the education and the quality of the experience. Mm -hmm. It's not just about um, your your perceived uh, rankings or what you feel are high standards. Yes, it's also yes. about the experience. No, if students are having to buy food by Chihuahua, mm -hmm. and it's not to diminish um, food from a Chihuahua, but they're at a university, surely they should be able to eat in a cafeteria. The cafeteria is there. And you're raising uh, fees. No, no, fees no, no, are going no, up, no, and, you're, and you're talking about quality. No, it's a, a worldwide. Uh, I, 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 was, uh, I did my PhD at the University of East Anglia for three years. I was there last June. All cafeteria uh, matters are outsourced. The responsibility of the university is to monitor uh, quality of the services. In videos, however, some of the students have a choice where either they're interested in saving a little cash for other purposes, but uh, nevertheless, uh, through the deans of students, we have regular engagement with them, so that one, they don't compromise on their nutrition. All right, let, let me yes, let me yes, let me yes. put it this way, uh, Professor Saka. You mm. yourself were reluctant to draw parallels between um, international standards of education and our standards. So I find it rather interesting that you're now drawing parallels between how students are fed at a university in the United Kingdom and here. And the reason being, do you not think you're creating, you, it's a bit divisive what's going on here? Because you then have a situation where those who can't afford to go and get outsourced food have to go elsewhere. Whereas before, it was, it was for everyone. Yeah, no, no, you see, isn't I, that, isn't I, that no, problematic? No, we, we know it's, it's not a contradiction. A contradiction. Um, what I would like to emphasize is that uh, there are services which universities by their nature, in this 21st century, have outsourced. But given Malawi's economic yeah, yeah, standing, yeah. do you not think that's divisive? Because you have some students who simply cannot afford to buy this outsourced food, whereas before, everybody could eat. Mm. But, uh, that uh, is let's, problematic. No, no, let's recognize, let's realize that we have moved from a time when we were, let's say, five million. Now, it's nearly four times as much. And access to uh, investor has increased. And since it has increased, uh, we are not responsible for accommodation, except for those who have applied, given the limited space, uh, similarly for uh, food and so forth. But also, it's interesting, it's also interesting, given this scenario, uh, students now must look and uh, after themselves, manage their resources uh, effectively in, the near, in our time. It was full board and lodging. In yeah. fact, yes, I was uh, going to say that, uh, Professor Saka, that uh, in, in some ways, don't you feel bad? And uh, doesn't it dishearten you or break your heart that this is the standard of education at the moment that children or the university students can't eat on campus, yet you yourself were probably benefited from those uh, services in your time? Now, this is a different time, and that we have cafeterias, uh, approved service providers to provide food, within the confines of the campuses, but others want to go across in order to save some money, yet compromising on their health and nutrition. I think that's a now an interesting matter. Okay, so would, would you say this, mm. this uh, presumably this falls under your reforms, mm. this, this, this move to decide to outsource catering services, etc. Mm. Is this, in your view, growth when some uh, university students can't eat in your No, no, it's in, not in that uh, we are interested in students not eat, uh, not uh, failing to eat, 
uh, but uh, we have put in mechanism. That's why we said, in terms of resources. So is this your idea of growth? That, that is part of the growth because growth is at an individual but for, level. For who? No, it's at an individual level and institutional level. And it's interesting, indeed, uh, you will have experience in your student days. Sometimes we are very wasteful of the food which was, we are provided in the cafeteria. Now, time has come where each one of us must take responsibility uh, to look after himself or herself. Uh, given the resource they uh, have. So instead, uh, sometimes it's interesting, uh, parents will give money to their children, wards, uh, and even the scholarships which are provided through the loans board, uh, the provision is such that it is adequate. The choice remains with the student uh, to go to Chihuahua. But the, that's where education or creating awareness on the uh, problems associated with the Chihuahua uh, must be made available to the students so that they make informed choices. And this is our committee because when you have good food, uh, you, uh, you can go into class, you will concentrate, and you can go to the library. That's our commitment, and that we will engage uh, continuously. Uh, but also, when you look at accommodation, uh, what we do, or what uh, is going on, is that uh, the college deans of uh, uh, students and the registrar or registry in, engage those who are service providers to making sure that the quality of accommodation uh, is of acceptable level and that indeed with the well-guided rules and regulations, others are being now deregistered because they are not offering appropriate accommodation services. So you think this system is working? Yeah. Whatever it is you're doing now, you think this is working? No, it's a, it's a, it's a journey. I, I drew a parallel from a river going down to the uh, Indian Ocean or the Atlantic. It's a growth curve. It's a growth curve. And indeed, we'll meet challenges on the way, but we are committed to addressing them to a minimum. All right, let's move on from that one, Professor Saga. We hear that the university is going to be broken up. There's all, yes. all, all kinds of talk about it being broken up. Um, what are the advantages and disadvantages of this, um, if, if I may ask you? Okay, thank you very much. It's a very important uh, question and matter. Uh, it contributes to the growth of a higher education sector. Yes. Uh, but I, I don't know, but that's where I'm coming there. Mm. Uh, it's interesting, as of now, we exist as a federal state uh, and a, a federal institution. Once the delinking is uh, completed, there are a lot of advantages, and that indeed, through that, uh, those four colleges who will become investors will now start thinking differently. We are one, we are being ranked uh, together. Now is an opportunity to excel beyond your sister or your brother. So competition is going to ensue. Uh, indeed, uh, better, better uh, and, uh, and, a disrupt or, and disrupted environment is likely to, uh, and that uh, those who wish to concentrate on the business of academy will be better and not be influenced. I'm by glad us. you talked about competition because yes, does sir. this mean this, that the individual colleges will now have, for example, their own individual central offices like yours, <coughs> headed by their own vice chancellors? Yes, sir. Would that I'm, mean that, that perhaps there'll be more competition in terms of who heads this particular college? That, that's uh, you know the effect of the uh, the delinking process because every university, wherever you go, there must be what we describe as a senate house or the vice chancellor's uh, para where there is a vice chancellor, the deputy, the investor registrar, and indeed the head of finance. So each of them will have that uh, replicated because it is a body corporate and that by the nature of the university, uh, it will be headed by the chancellor, uh, supported by the vice chancellor, who is uh, the day-to-day -day, uh, chief executive officer for that institution, and then a team to support him or her. So every university will have that. All right. So are you going to be welcoming of this idea of competition? Because that means you won't be the supreme, as it were, for lack of a better phrase. Yes, yes I, I will not uh, be privileged to lead, uh, to participate in the leadership of any of them, except if I did apply uh, and that I was success, uh, successful in, a, uh, in interviews or a bid. And interestingly, uh, for, for me as a vice chancellor, I would actually say that it's a very interesting matter because now you will be looking at four universities and you can have an opportunity to say, I think probably I could uh, contribute 
to this investor and then you can apply a property. Okay, let's look at the process of, of um, how you come into office. Uh, I think mm. you're also, you've also implemented a change to that, haven't you? You know, Because the, initially no people would apply, but now it seems it's happening internally and you're voting internally. Is that No, no, no. no. We, mm. There is a, a call, a, is an, advocate, mm. uh, an invitation uh, uh, to the chairman of council or indeed the search committee if uh, uh, in this regard uh, uh, because uh, uh, the vice chancellor's office would not have been constituted by that time. They would be applying to the chairman of council or to the comptroller of stationary corporation and that a shortlisting will be undertaken, and those who are shortlisted will be uh, invited for interviews. So it won't be done internally? You won't no, be no, voting for each other internally? No, no, that was that, a proposal, wasn't it? No, no, but it, in the academy, it, it has never been the case. However, there are different practices. Let's say if you went to invest of Makerere, what will happen is that the people apply, and the shortlisted candidates, they go around the campuses to present their visions, and on the basis of that, uh, if there were five, they would take the top three for much more in-depth discussion with the search committee. And then they will make recommendations to the council and appointment is made. All right. We're about yes. to wrap up, Professor Saka, but I wondered, yes. on a personal note, yes, uh, what would you consider your highlights or the successes of your tenure um, in your view? I mean, given... Be frank and be, I think you need to be candid given the way the University of Malawi has been tainted over the last 12 months or so. Yes, um, what would you say are some of your successes? You know, the, uh, the, the successes which uh, one John Saka would share are uh, really on the basis of collective effort. I am a leader, uh, but uh, you, don't, you can't be a leader without uh, your colleagues to work with. And uh, there are several... Uh, so basically, your successes are just the successes even of the president because he's the chancellor. Uh, it's, 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 it's of the University of Malawi. Eh? Mm. It's of the University of Malawi. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so, what so we could say the president has been a success. In no, some as a chancellor. As a chancellor. Uh, as a chancellor of the really? University of Malawi, yes. Because it, it, it's a shared responsibility. It's a shared responsibility. The University of Malawi is a body corporate with mm. the officers in that. Uh, so if we have successes, we, we must, they must be shared. I would like to indicate the following. The one I mentioned already, that as we started, our self-generated income was about 6 point something percent. Mm. Now we have gone to 18 percent. I think that's a, a useful achievement which we can say. In our four-year period uh, in the VC's uh, office and supported by the uh, senior leadership team, we will have been under the guidance of council. But equally, uh, during this period, uh, we have uh, contributed, uh, we have seen growth in postgraduate studies because it's the postgraduate studies which inform quality research. And indeed, when you have high level of postgraduate studies, the research outputs come out and therefore our ranking uh, improves significantly. So at present, we would say we have churned out, we have really approved uh, through Senate 32 programs 50% of which are PhD. Do you think that might actually perhaps uh, help to address the issue of high um, youth unemployment that we have in the country at the moment? Because we have a lot of your graduates who you're talking about who are high quality, um, who uh, have done really well, and yet youth unemployment is still incredibly high. People can't get jobs. They can't get yes, jobs. Of course, granted, the economy is small. The market is small. But mm -hmm. I do believe it's also a reflection of the university and the quality of education in some ways. Yes, yes. It's interesting. In, amongst the new programs that we have uh, approved and they are being implemented is uh, an entrepreneurship program at the Polytechnic. Eh? Uh, and that uh, already there is uh, a process to have certificate or diploma uh, programs for entrepreneurship so that those who have finished uh, their uh, studies can go, let's say, for one year or six months so that they can start and begin thinking about being an entrepreneur. Because that's a very, very important. Is the University of Malawi becoming more dynamic? Because at the end of the day, that is what is going to set us apart. That is what is going to allow mm -hmm. Malawi to compete at that level of tertiary education. Yes, yes, yes. Are we becoming dynamic in the, in the type of courses that we're offering? Are our graduates marketable everywhere? They, they are. They are a market. But you observed well that uh, the capacity to absorb is limited. And it's only through self-employment that uh, we can have a window for these individuals individually or supporting families, their families, to move the businesses to a different level or forming a consortium 
or consortia because it's very, very important. And we're emphasizing this every, every time. And if we, when we review the uh, academic programs, these are matters of the heart. All right. Because we want to be relevant and respond to the needs, changing needs. All right. So those are some of your excesses, the yes. fact that there's more postgraduate courses yes, yes. that are being offered yeah. now. Yeah. Um, so in a nutshell, you're happy with your performance as the vice chancellor? Uh, I, I, th I think I would say very happy. Uh, indeed, there are always opportunities for further growth. Further growth. That's where the emphasis is on. So growth. all this talk about Malawi's education sector being in shambles, mm. particularly because of what has been happening at to the, at the University of Malawi, is really just misplaced. Uh, I think uh, one thing is that I would like to say is that individuals may need to come and interact with us, because sometimes people make statements uh, in the absence of evidence, in the absence of evidence. But it must be recognised that supposing you have a thousand uh, people and one was uh, indeed not to perform, the generalization would be most unfortunate because indeed statistics must be utilized that the threshold is this because even in our own assessment when we offer uh, exams and so forth at the end of the year, if you are a student, uh, if you are an alumnus of the University of Malawi, you will appreciate that it's always a bell shaped there are those in the less than 10% who are not performer, uh, the top and the majority of them there. But the right. question is, where do we focus our attention? Maybe we are on the left rather than uh, the three-quarter of the bear, because okay. I think that's what we needed to do. All right, Professor Saka, it was a pleasure uh, you know, I, coming here to Zomba you know, to have I, this lovely yes. chat with you. <laughs> thank you we very wish much. You all the best. You know, thank you very much. It's but, good that you came because uh, it's important uh, in this engagement that we are creating awareness about uh, the value, the usefulness, and the role of the investor of Malawi. Absolutely. And we require the society to support. Uh, the investor in his mandate. As we Indeed, if there's anything that might actually help Malawi develop, it's education. But I'm afraid that is where we're going to have to leave this week's edition of Times Exclusive right here from Zomba, the former capital of Malawi, uh, after talking to Professor John Kalenga Saka. From me, Wesley Kasambal, until next time, here on Times TV, it's bye for now. Uh -huh.